Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, meteorologist Greg Majeski, your personal weatherman here, bringing you the weather without all that social media hype here on your Friday, January 24th, 2025. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we're tracking here for today as we're looking at some welcome Southern California relief. Yeah, we got some rain on the forecast there and maybe use some heavy rain, which could be a good and bad thing. I'll explain that here in just a second. Weather pattern change is coming. Looks like we're gonna see a little more progressive pattern develop across the United States, which means we're gonna see uh, more storm systems kind of crossing the country. As a result of this pattern change I'm seeing, could we be seeing a snowy February ahead? We're gonna look at the long range snow projections here over the next couple of weeks and see what it's kicking out for us. Now, before we get going into this, at first I do wanna thank all the new followers here on the page. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so at this time. And if you can, uh, please share this with your family and friends. It'd be a pleasure and honor to have you on board. All right, let's go ahead and take a look right now at our morning satellite imagery. Just plain old cold here across the eastern third of the United States. We've got one more last cold shot coming in here across the southeast before we see a nice warm up. So we've got that snow on the ground here across the deep south, but it's going to get a good melt going into this weekend. A little weak system up here up to the north, and then we're going to watch for an upper level load that's going to drop down into California for this weekend and into Southern California, bring some welcome rains there. And then eventually the pattern will become a little more active for the Pacific Northwest as we'll see more storm systems uh, approaching that way as we go through the next uh, couple of weeks or so. All right, looking at our morning uh, watches and warnings right now. Again, we're still dealing with the red flag warnings down here. Windy up in Northern California with that upper low coming on down. Freeze warnings there across the deep south. As we look at our morning uh, current surface map, we're seeing some very cold frigid temperatures here in the middle of the country, minus nine, minus 17. Again, one more last gasp of Arctic chill coming in across the east. So a pretty frigid day ahead for your Friday. Saturday still looking cold for the east, and then we'll begin to modify things as we go into next week. Let's go take a look at some of the snow that's currently falling in here right along the Kentucky and Tennessee border here. Uh, just kind of riding in there, uh, just south of Bowling Green, kind of moving off toward the east. A little quick little a uh, reinforcing shot of cold air that's uh, kind of squeezing out a little snow here. Should amount to a whole lot, but again, pretty to look like as that continues to race off toward the east and over the Appalachian Mountains. Let's go take a look at the list from the Storms Prediction Center. We do have a return chance of thunderstorms back in the forecast, something we've not seen in quite some time. Our day one outlook, though, for today, uh, looking quiet here for today, but that's going to change as we go into your day two and into your day three. So let's go take a look at the day three outlook as we're looking at a general thunderstorm threat here, uh, basically across Texas. So we'll see some heavier rains and some thunderstorms developing there uh, as we go into your Saturday and going into Sunday morning. Looks like it's going to be overnight. And then as we go into your day three, uh, going into Sunday, again, we'll see that thunderstorm threat there through Louisiana and the Texas Gulf Coast area uh, coming in areas that hard to believe they've got that big snow dump. So they got some rain and some thunderstorms coming their way as we go into this upcoming weekend. Now, as far as the heavy rain threat is concerned, here's something that's going to be a nice welcome sight to see. So day one, not seeing anything there, but let's go to your day two and uh, check out this. Like, ah, look at this. Oh, got some heavy rain threat down here across Southern California. Now, I was mentioning that's a good and bad thing. Good thing to help with the, the wildfires and things like that, but could be a bad thing in the form of mudslides. Obviously, when you have that, wildfires like this, it kind of weakens the ground a bit. And you get some mud, you get some good rains on there. Mudslides could be a potential problem, so that's something they're going to have to watch out for, but definitely will help with the firefighting efforts, and it looks like that'll continue as well into day three going into Sunday as well, and then we'll see some additional rains here across the Texas Gulf Coast and back toward Mississippi, obviously with a few of those thunderstorms that'll be coming up here as we head into this upcoming weekend. So again, looking at our hazards outlook, three to seven day, obviously we got the heavy rain threat, Southern California, that's right where we need it, and it's good to see that. That'll linger probably into early next week, and of course the rains here across the deep south. So let's go ahead and talk about the high resolution model. We're gonna be looking at that first, the short term forecast, as we're gonna kind of step you through here uh, going into this upcoming weekend. Uh, a couple areas we're gonna be watching for here, we're just gonna take this forward a little bit. We got one little uh, clipper system of some uh, snows across the Great Lakes. We're gonna watch the rains increase here, and you're also gonna notice the rains increasing down here across Southern California. Keep a watch on that timestamp there in the upper right hand corner. So I take you through this again as we watch the snows here. Uh, going into Friday night and into your Saturday. So there goes the, the little bit of snows there across the Great Lakes. That'll also help with the, the lake effect as well with that system moving through there as we go into throughout the day on your Saturday. So that's about what, one o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday there. And then as we go into the overnight hours, going into Saturday night and Sunday, that's when we begin to see those welcome changes. You'll notice here the rain starts to show up here across portions of Texas. And yes, we're getting some rain here kicking up across Southern California. Uh, that's a welcome sight to see as we go into Saturday night and into Sunday morning. 
All right, let's talk about the jet stream. That jet stream has been what's driving our weather. And what we've been kind of dealing with mostly is a kind of a north to south configuration here with these cold shots that have been coming in here. We've been kind of keeping the Pacific uh, coast at bay and not really seeing any progression of a storm system coming in through. Uh, and we're going to see that change as we go through the next couple of weeks. So that's that pattern shift I'm talking about. Now we got the, that pinch off low. That's what's kicking off there uh, going into this weekend. That's what's going to set off the rains there across Southern California. A welcome sight there as that moves on through. That's going to be slow to kind of kick on out, but it will eventually kick on out as we go into next week. So it kind of lingers into Monday and Tuesday. And then eventually the jet stream kicks it up and kicks it right on out, rolls it right into the plains there as we go toward the end of next week. So that's going to shut off some showers and thunderstorms on this. We'll have to watch very closely on this uh, potential for maybe some severe weather on that. I don't know. It really kind of depends on how warm it gets out ahead of that, uh, that system. But with that little low pulling out of there, we'll have to watch that closely going into Thursday into Friday. And then it swings up toward the north there, and then we'll have another little dip of the jet stream falling behind it. There's another system there uh, coming down with another cold shot coming down, heading into the second and third. And then as we go on out, kind of looking at the long range here, again, we're seeing one system after another. Here's another one coming in. And look, you got the jet stream streaming in here coming on the west coast. So again, we'll have a parade of storm systems start to come in off the west coast. And that's going to uh, transition to where the, wherever the cold air is set up, we're going to see uh, better chances of snow across the northern tier. I'd say maybe the northern half of the United States, the way things are looking currently. Now, I want to illustrate this pattern change. I do want to show you this is the, the pressure anomaly. When you got the yellows and the oranges, that's high pressure. It's obviously very dominant across our country. We don't have any major storm systems across the country for today. But when you see the blues and stuff like that, that is the lower pressure. It's your storm systems, okay? So I want to kind of show this again, uh, showing that we have that weak system again coming across the Great Lakes. You see that. You see the Southern California system. Here's the one across the Great Lakes. But the big thing I want you to notice is that the, the, the number of these over the next co uh, couple of weeks are definitely going up. So you've got the system coming into the coming into the northeast, uh, going in toward uh, Monday and Tuesday. You see in the blues, there's another little system there, a little clipper system here coming in uh, across the Great Lakes. Here's one down here across the south. We'll watch as that kicks on out. And again, just the sheer number of these increase. So this clear, it goes up in the middle of the country. That's the one going into the next weekend. I have to watch that closely. And then there's another one here coming out of the south. Here's another one here. So as you can see, the overall trend is a lot more progressive. We've been not getting these big storms, and they've been kind of pretty far between. So now we're looking at every few days we're seeing a storm system uh, coming in across the country. And then there's another one coming across there going into toward the 6th. And then there's another one coming in behind it. So you see what I'm talking about? More progressive pattern with better chances of rain, better chances of snow uh, coming into the country as we go in towards your February. So let's go ahead and look at the precipitation on this as we're going to watch this as we go through this upcoming weekend. Obviously, we've got that little bit of snow coming across the Great Lakes going into your Saturday, obviously. Here's our welcome rains here across Southern California. That upper low is going to be uh, tough to forecast. It depends on how quickly that thing kicks on out. It's going to linger there for a few days going into Monday and Tuesday. So definitely helping not only with the rain chances. Uh, you notice the blue in here. That indicates to me we've got uh, lower heights. That means cooler temperatures as well. So those two things in tandem will be a big help for the firefighting efforts out there in Southern Cal. All right. So we're going to see that eventually pulling out. Once it does so, we'll see some uh, rains coming in here. Again, with this kind of low kicking on out, you got snows on the back side of this. I have to watch this closely in here going in toward Thursday, see if we get any thunderstorms. Could be marginal, maybe a slight risk for severe weather with that uh, later in the week. So I want to get a few more runs to see if that's going to actually come to fruition or not because upper level lows are kind of tricky depending on when they're going to kick on out. So this moves on up to the north, seeing some snows there, kind of kick into the high plains and up through Minnesota. That's one, for, one good chance of snows. And this lingers into the southeast going into Saturday and uh, moves off the east coast. Then we got another system coming in across the south. There's another little chance of rain here across the south. More snows here. Starting to get that onshore flow up here, so the snows will increase across the west as well as we go toward uh, Monday. So this is going about 10 days out right now. I'm going to take it all the way out. We'll look at look at the progression, the parade of storms that will continue to move through. Snows across the northeast. Uh, that moves on through. Here's another snowstorm here. There's no snow chance here across the Great Lakes. We've had a lot of those uh, that have been riding across the Canadian border, that's for sure. And then another snow event coming out of the Rockies uh, going in toward, uh, say, the, the 7th. So we got several opportunities for snow to pick up across areas that haven't seen a whole lot of it, especially the high, uh, high plains. It's hard to believe we've had more snow in places of the deep, deep south than we've had across the northern portions of the United States so far this winter. So let's go ahead and talk about the precipitation totals here. I'm going to kind of show again the next 10 days. It shows you the rains definitely kick, picking on up here. So the next 10 days here, uh, you see that cooking up uh, significantly. So here across the deep south, the west coast, and even across the northeast. So we're seeing more of this. 
And I'm going to go ahead and take this all the way out. I don't need to go out to 360, but I'm looking at a forecast trends, which definitely shows a more progressive pattern. Thus, you see more of the country seeing rain. The only area that's not seeing a whole lot here is many areas of the southwest, but even a good portion of the country, I'd say 90% of it, is going to see rain chances coming up. So we're going to get to more of a seasonable uh, a flow as far as seeing precipitation. Now let's look at the snow totals on this as well. I'm also going to take this out all the way as well, again, as I'm looking toward forecast trends. So short term here, over the next uh, three days, it looks like uh, just a, not very much snow. We're going to see a little bit out here in the, in the, in the out there with that, out, that low pressure system out in California, a little bit for the interior. A little bit across the Great Lakes. Looked like the lake effect really kicking in there across Buffalo and up toward New York State uh, going into this upcoming weekend. But as we go out for 10 days, so we'll, we'll see that again things begin to change. So we got that one storm system here that'll track that low, and we got the, the snows there on the back part of that. You notice we're measuring feet of snow out there into California, uh, Oregon, and into Washington. Not quite into California on that one just yet. But again, that snowy pattern continues, and we'll take this all the way out to 360. And look how much of the country here is, is going to see some form of snow here uh, falling across the country. Again, more north, uh, not, not here in the south, where they got that surprise snow earlier this week. But uh, uh, definitely going to see more of a typical, I would call it more of a typical uh, winter weather pattern we're going to see with m more opportunities to see snow across the country. For So you snow lovers out there have been kind of missing out. Yeah, I think you're going to get your opportunity here as we go deeper into the month of February. So let's go look at your temperature anomaly map. Obviously, we've got we've got the, the below normal temperatures here uh, across the east here uh, throughout the day on your Friday here. And uh, we're going to track that start to go bye-bye. We're going to see milder temperatures across the southeast. Many areas getting in, well, back into the 60s. So whatever snow is there, it's going to be gone by the time we get to next week. That is for sure. Uh, still not looking above normal temperatures here across the high plains. Uh, not really. Uh, been, been, that's been very uh, constant here uh, between the cold shots that have been coming on down here. So uh, looks like we'll see uh, milder temperatures for next week. Notice as we go into Wednesday and into uh, uh, Friday of next week through Wednesday through Friday. Big part of the country here seeing uh, above normal temperatures below normal here out in the west. Obviously, you get a little more, more active uh, weather pattern is expected as we go into February. And then we'll just gonna have to track when these cold shots come down. So we got one cold shot there coming there on the 4th. And uh, obviously, when you get a cold shot that comes down, it means we get a warm up back here in the back. Notice some very Arctic, cold Arctic air up here into Canada. I'll have to watch closely uh, going into February. And then that comes on down. And then the next shot comes on down. And as we go in toward, uh, looks like the 7th and 8th. So we got a couple of good cold shots coming down. Now, with the pattern becoming more progressive as we go into February, what I've got to watch closely is when we get up, we got opportunities to see these air masses clash together. Uh, obviously, as you go into February, we start to warm a little bit more across the south. So that means that we may see a, a greater opportunities for severe weather as well. So not only are we are looking at a more progressive pattern for increased chances for snow, the deep south will need to watch closely for opportunities, especially later in the month of February, for se severe weather. So I'm going to be watching that very, very closely. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. Let's look at the Climate Prediction Center Outlook here. We're looking at 6 to 10 day. This looks pretty reasonable to me based off what we kind of looked at there. Uh, briefly, above normal temperatures here from the 29th to the 2nd, the 6th to the 10th. But with the pattern becoming a little more progressive, becomes a little more normal across the northern tier and a little bit milder here across the south. This is probably more of what uh, I think the long-range forecasters were, were kind of projecting uh, for that La Nina pattern. This looks more, more like what you would expect there. Now, obviously, with the precipitation, we're going to see above normal here across the south, still holding a below normal here across the west and the north, northwest. So we'll see above normal. But as we go deeper into the month, a little bit more change. So the dry weather starts to, to get, kind of get squished on out of here a little bit, a little more progressive with the storm system. So either near normal or above normal precipitation chances going as we head toward February 6th, thus increase opportunities for snow, especially across the northern tier of the United States, basically the, the northern half, the way that uh, we're currently looking on the latest European model run. So looks like things will get a little more a little more interesting here. At least we're going to say goodbye to the deep freeze. Uh, that's the good news there as that begins to pull on out. But it looks like uh, we're going to have to watch these individual storm systems as they develop. The first one we're going to watch is going to be that upper low across California. It's going to bring in the, the the rain and the snow and things down there where they desperately need it. And then when that system kicks out later next week, we'll have to watch closely on whether we get uh, any kind of potential severe weather, maybe Thursday into Friday. Uh, right now, I'm not overly concerned about it. Maybe marginal to a slight risk on that uh, as that pulls on out. Maybe even um, a potential pretty good winter storm on the backside of this. I don't know if it'll be a blizzard or not, but it's something to watch a little bit later in the week. 
All right, that's your update for now. Again, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, it'll be an honor and a privilege to be one of your weather sources. God knows there's plenty of us out there in the YouTube universe, and I'd love to be one of your sources. So if you could, do me a favor right now, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And as always, please leave me a comment down below. Give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate y'all's support. All right, that's it for now. You guys take it easy. Be good, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next update. Have a great weekend. Bye, everybody.